we made charcoal, we hunted, we went with, out with fishermen, and we took everything in and did a big hanami party. So I was on and off in Japan for about a year total, over a couple of years. Um, and I spent time there staging and training in restaurants and trying to learn about Japanese cuisine. I was cooking in Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto. Um, and then I spent time with friends that were farming in the countryside and learned about their rural ways. And we did a big pop-up where we did as much as we could from scratch. Um, we made charcoal, we hunted, we went with, out with fishermen, and we took everything in and did a big hanami party uh, for the whole village. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the knife skills there that I saw were just so at, at a higher level. I mean, cooks train for such a long, longer period. Um, the restaurant that I was working at in Kyoto, every cook in that restaurant had been working there for five to ten years. And their knife skills and their technical skills were just at a higher level. A lot of cooks in New York City work in a restaurant for a year and then kind of move on. Um, and so it was incredible to be in a restaurant where there are five cooks with 10 years of like 5, 10, 15, 20 years working in that restaurant, three generations. So some of the skills were just on a level that I haven't seen before here in New York. So I use a lot of the same knives in both, you know, cooking in New York, cooking in Japan. But one knife that I don't use very often right now is my usuba, um, which in Japan I would use on a daily basis to turn and carve vegetables, um, but not as much currently. Yeah, I think it's because the cuisine is different and just like the appreciation for things are different. So the way that the chefs and cooks choose to spend their time can be different, where in a Kyoto restaurant, there's a high level of appreciation for the look and feel of the vegetables and um, so they dedicate more time and resource to presenting those vegetables with those knife work and those carving and, and decorations that isn't necessarily valued or understood in the same way here so it's not a high priority item sometimes yeah i think that's one of the major differences too between kind of like the western knife and uh and Japanese knife, even in the Western style knives, is the Japanese knives are so much thinner. And that understanding takes time to work with. Because the thinner knife is always going to be sharper, but it's more delicate. And that edge can disappear quickly if it's not used well. And you can't like cut through bones and um, things with very fragile, sharp edges like a usuba or a takobiki. It just doesn't, it's not made for that. Yeah, more expensive knife, it has specialized purposes and, and it's gonna be good at those things. And it's not necessarily gonna be good at other things. So yeah, I think the more expensive knives often can become specialized in a way that is misunderstood.